George Fisker. I played uh, with the Niners in 80 and 81. Uh, during the 81 season, I developed hydrocephalus, water on the brain, and I underwent uh, brain surgery uh, several weeks after a um, knee surgery. And if you hit the next slide, Robert, real quick, um, I don't know if any of you have been down to Amon's clinic yet. Okay, Dr. Amon does great work. He'll do evaluations. On it. This is a spec scan. This is a, a 3D model of your brain. And I use this in some of my um, sessions that I do. I've, I've spoken quite a bit on this issue. This is your brain. And I tell folks, that this, this is a non-football player's brain. Okay, this is my brain on football. Okay, that's after nine brain surgeries. As I tell people, it shouldn't look like cottage cheese. Those areas are areas where there's no metabolic activity. Um, so that's a good little attention getter when I usually get up and talk. Um, and again, so I, I would recommend if you guys get a chance to get down to Amon's clinic tomorrow, I believe Dr. Willimer is speaking. Okay, she runs the clinic for him. I just returned on, uh, I went down there in February for my fifth exam. Um, and I'm a lucky one. Um, I went down about two years ago and I had a three day full blown neuropsychological evaluation before I started my treatments, but I'm kind of getting ahead of myself and I'll get into that in a minute. So we'll go back to the 81 season, first brain surgery during the season. They inserted a, a shunt in my head. I have a, a, a drain, goes from my brain. I have a pressure valve in the back of my head. There's a drain, goes down to my abdomen. That works 24 seven. Between that first surgery and September of 81, uh, that was our Super Bowl season. I came back from that and um, was told I could still play. In fact, if any of you want a copy of my work comp, um, some of the depositions and things I have, I will gladly give these and make copies for you. This was a, this was a quote from their neurosurgeon during my, my, my trial, I guess you call it. Dr. Koenig, that was my surgeon, said he was considering a continuing a professional football career that maybe, a, that maybe a special helmet could be built to protect the shunt, but he would not recommend uh, me playing against the risk unless I was going to be all pro. So basically, he's telling a 23-year-old guy who, you know, we all know our mentality back then, you know, God, you know, you may die doing this, but uh, hey, if you're going to be all pro, it may be worth rolling the dice. <laughs> this, this, was the, this was the surgeon that the Niners sent me to. Okay, this was what he said during my, his deposition at my work comp hearing. Okay, so again, if anybody wants copies of these things, they're very helpful, um, uh, come to me, please. So I'll get back to the story. Four months after the Super Bowl, um, I go back and see the team doctor. I tell him, you know, I'd been arrested three times in that nine months. Had never been a trouble in my life. I'd go out and have a couple beers. Next thing I know, I'm in jail. Eight, 10, 12, 15 hours later, I'd have no memory how I got there. I was hearing stories of me doing things totally out of character. The doctor he says, well, not from my surgery. And I said, boy, I've never, I've never had these things happen before. So they do a brain scan on me. He says, I look fine. I told him I was leaving for Mexico the next day to go fishing with my brother and his wife. No problem, leave the country. I said, what about drinking? Now you're good to go. First day down in Mexico, the next day, one margarita at dinner, start getting killer headaches. I go back to the room. We were just sharing a little cabin on the beach. My brother and his wife come back a few hours later. I'm going into a coma. Takes them a day and a half to get me home. Now I'm comatose. New brain surgeon in Sacramento. Rush me in, reoperate. Ten hours later, they're losing me again. Rush me back in. The third brain surgery. Give me last rites. Now again, I'm 23 years old. This is four months after the Super Bowl, after I just gave the Niners two years. I really don't remember anything that first year, and I was really out of it. I went back to work immediately, but one of my first recollections is I start to get hospital bills, and it was several hundred thousand dollars. I can't remember what the total was. And I wrote this so many times, even with my memory, I, I don't remember things very well. I remember the 49ers address because I was always, please bill San Francisco 49ers, 711 Nevada Street, Redwood City. I would get the bills back from them about a week or two later, and they would just circle the total and write, you owe this amount. Okay, this was four months after we went to the Super Bowl. 
Five years I had creditors on me. And I'm battling them, phone calls, you know, fighting. They took me as far as we went to court for a work comp claim. They put me on the stand and their attorney comes out with my last day's practice schedule from five years earlier and goes through the entire day grilling me. 7 to 7.15, individual meetings, explain this. So I tell them, well, as we come in, we meet with our individual coaches. So whole, the whole, takes me through the whole day, practice. Of course, as I play defensive tackle, believe it or not. And of course, for us, you know, every play just about was head contact. So bottom line is, I persevered. I won my case in 86. They offered me 35000 to go away. And I very politely told them, you know, what they could do with the 35000 I said, I know what the law states. I want my past medical paid for. I want to keep my, my future medical open on both my knee and my head. Those were both separate work comp claims. And I told them, I, I was a biology major at Colorado before I was drafted. I said, I want to go back to school through vocational rehab. I, would, I want to continue and I want to complete my college degree. So we did. I went back to school in 86. I had four more brain surgeries in one 10 month period while I'm trying to get through four semesters of chemistry and physics and all the fun stuff that I put off, you know, while you're playing ball, trying to do the lab classes was a little rough. So five more years it took me to finish my degree. Multiple grand mal seizures. Okay, finally finished my degree. And now I really know the system. And it's, we're not working the system. These are earned benefits that all of us earned. Any employee, anywhere, injured on the job. I'm an employer. And if I have an employee that comes to work for me and is injured on the job the first day, that's on my work comp. And I have insurance for that. So we need to empower folks. So I, I, bottom line was, I have never lost a fight with them. They have fought me tooth and nail every time there's a change in my prescription, every time there's a doctor recommendation. Um, so we went through this battle. It's been 31 years for me. I'm still fighting them. About two years ago, my wife and I go see our primary care. And many, many years ago, even before I was married, I learned to take someone with me to doctor's appointments. I'm always taking notes. I, I, I go nowhere without my notebooks. I have to write my entire days down, every minute, what we're doing, what we're talking about. I'll read through these every night the last week or so. Years ago, before I got married, I would take my brother with me to doctor's appointments because we, particularly football players, we have this conception of how we're operating. And we'll go in and the doctor will go, how you doing? You go, I'm doing good. And my brother would sit there and go, doc, he's not doing good. You know, he, he drove over to a job site last week that we finished four and a half years earlier. I told him to meet me at the site and I'm over there waiting, waiting, waiting. He goes, hey, you know, we finished that one you know, years ago. So learn to take some backup folks with you. Before I go into doctor's appointments, my wife and I will sit down and we will script questions. And I tell the doctors when I go in, do not schedule me for your typical 15 minute appointment where usually you sit in the room for eight of the minutes, they pop in for a minute, then they're gone again. I'll tell them, I said, if you don't have 45 minutes for me, I'll find someone else. I'm paying your bill. So we go in with a very well-planned, scripted game plan for doctors. We have, we have, I have very, very detailed questions that I want answered. Everything from the meds are recommend, they're recommending or maybe there's an additional treatment out there that they're not telling you about. So bottom line is, uh, I've been through the system for years. After going to Amon's clinic and being evaluated uh, with these spec scans, they started me on a um, hyperbaric oxygen treatment. And I started on uh, mega doses of omega-3 fish oils, very simple treatments. At the time I started all this, I was still, I still am functioning as an environmental consultant and wildlife biologist but I was on four different dementia medicines at once, trying to function. I was on Lamectal for seizures. I, have, I developed grand mal seizures during my, after my first brain surgery. I was on um, Lexapro, Aricep, Namenda, and then the last one they put me on was Resperidol, where my office has been in Sacramento and I've lived in Grass Valley for 15 years. It's about an hour drive. 
in one week period, there were two different days I drove 20 to 25 minutes up the same highway I've driven for 15 years trying to get home. Nothing looked familiar. I'm looking at off ramps. I had no idea. I knew I wanted to get to Grass Valley. I had no idea if I was even headed in the right direction on the freeway. Okay. I go in to see our doctors again. He says, well, George, you have dementia. We know that. There's no cure for it. This is what he tells us. This was two years ago. He says, you need to get your finances in order, which, of course, we have none. He said, um, get your finances in order. He told me I could not drive anymore. And he said, prepare for, I said, what are you telling me, prepare for the end? <laughs> Come on, I was 51 at the time, for 50. So bottom line was, uh, after that little appointment is when we went down to Dr. Amos' clinic. He started me on this hyperbaric uh, oxygen treatments, the omega-3s. I've quit taking all of my drugs other than my anti-seizure stuff. I'm still functioning as a biologist. Okay, and, I, and I've, I've spoken at, at Senate hearings and congressional meetings, and I, and I tell the folks, we all know where SSI is going. You, can, you have your choice. We can either help implement some of these treatments. You know, the vets now, they actually have hyperbaric chambers over in I, Iraq and I, Afghanistan, and if they'll treat them pre-concussions, and if you get all that, uh, all your cells uh, infused with additional oxygen, they're finding out that these guys that are getting their brains rattled by these IEDs are recovering exponentially quicker. They're back in action in two or three days as opposed to, we all know what it's like when you have a major con concussion and you think you're functioning fine and all of a sudden you realize you don't remember anything for the prior three weeks. So there are treatments out there these are called off-label treatments, but they're available. And, and one of the things that I'm becoming very, very active in now with, with Dr. Duncan, too, he's, he's the president of the International um, Hyperbaric Association, is we're trying to get this, make this treatment available to more and more folks. I have presented this to Dr. Ellenbogen at the NFL, their head, neck, and spine injury. Man, he, we're trying to get chambers in the locker rooms for guys. You get a concussion, you get, you get a concussed person in a, in a hyperbaric chamber within four hours of a concussion, the vast majority will return to full cognitive functioning within 24 to 48 hours. Okay, I've crunched numbers for, for the NFL owners. Average salary now is a million a year. Okay, you have a guy out for four weeks, that's you know, four sixteenths of a million. They could pay for a chamber. If they're back in two days, okay? So we're really pushing to get these chambers available, and I'm also pushing the NFL, here's an opportunity for you to make some brownie points because your butt's in a ringer right now on what you've done to us. So put these chambers in the locker room and open them up to some of the vets in the areas. And that way you can take credit for helping to ameliorate some of these injuries that we all, we all have sustained through our, our they're all industry-caused injuries. But yet, the onus is on us and our families to take care of it. So I'm working on all aspects that I possibly can on the legislative, um, with the NFL. Uh, we're trying to get the word out to as many guys as possible that there is help out there, and to the families, too. Our families suffer more than we do. We, we are, we're used to just being having the, the snot beat out of us, and, and we just suck it up. Well, our families pay for that. So uh, I know I've kind of got off track here a little bit. Um, uh, the big thing is that uh, you do, like, like Ron said, you do have rights. Work comp is a great opportunity. Again, if you're in any industry in the country and you're injured and you can no longer do function in that capacity, you are obliged to vocational rehab, at least in California. I don't know if other states are but they are obliged by law to retrain you in a field of work where you make a comparable amount of money. And when I was playing, professional sports were qualified, classified as top wages. So, but I just, all I asked for was I wanted to finish my degree and I told them I'd take care of myself. So here it is 31 years later, I bill them for every prescription. My hyperbaric, I just got another prescription for 40 more treatments, well these are, you know, 200 bucks a pop. Okay, I finished 145 treatments. I'm going in for another 40. Billing them, billing them, 
these are things that we've earned, though. We, we paid the price for this. This isn't, these aren't handouts. Everything I do now, I, I bill work comp. And they'll fight me, and I've never lost. Because this is the law. This is the law. Um, so they finally, just last month, they came to me, they wanted to sit down and, and do a settlement. So what they offered me was they were going to put $30,000 in a non-wasting endowment account, which they would put $6,700 a year into it. So that's kind of like a little insurance policy, okay, a very small one. Then they offered me $75,000 cash, and they offered me $1,076 a month for 15 years payable to my family if I didn't last that long, okay? Some people, that may sound pretty good. If any of you have spent any time in the hospital, like Dave talks about $600,000 out-of-pocket expenses, for me, I'm crunching numbers right now on what they've spent on me over the last 31 years. You know, it's into the millions. So, you know, what they offered me was probably a week, maybe not even that, wouldn't even have been a week in intensive care after brain surgery. And I will have more surgeries. This shunt goes out, you never know. I've had them go out in 10 hours. This one, as my wife tells me, I'm living on borrowed time. This one has lasted by far the longest, and I want to say it's been about 16 years. But I also had three in that first nine months. I had four in a 10-month period. Um, so it's, you, you never know. What they offered me, like I said, would have maybe covered a day or two in the hospital with what I go through. So bottom line is, guys, and, and for your families, empower yourselves. Find out what our rights are, what any em injured employee's rights are, and you don't have to have been diagnosed with a concussion. Studies prove now subconcussive hut hits, multiple subconcussive hits over the years cause the same damage as having a concussion. And most of us never realize when we had a concussion. How many of you, I mean, none of us played where you didn't hit hard enough to see stars, okay? Believe it or not, when you saw stars, that's your brain concussing against your skull. That's what a concussion is. Now, if we weren't seeing stars every day, we weren't playing hard. So most of us in here probably had thousands of concussions, varying levels of concussions, but concussions nonetheless. So again, you don't have to ever have been diagnosed to have brain injuries, um, uh, empower yourselves, find out what's available. Guys like Ron and these guys, Brian, thank God they're here to help answer some of your questions. Um, I'm an expert in the, in the, in the sense that, that I, I've been in the trenches fighting this for, for 31 years. Um, and so, and I've learned a lot over the years. I've also forgotten a lot because I don't remember things very well. But I've got them all in my notebooks too, so I can dig stuff out. I have 28 years of these things every day of my life. Um, and so anyway, I don't want, I'm not probably going around in circles here, but um, if anyone wants copies of, of some of my settlements, um, please, we'll make copies for you today. And uh, I think I covered about everything I wanted to touch on. Any questions real quick? What about the, uh, the deal they're doing now? Uh, you know what? Let's get a microphone so we can all hear real well. Yes, hi, uh, Gary Padgett from Indianapolis. Um, I'm the vice president of Indianapolis, uh, the Indianapolis uh, Alumni Association out there. And one thing that's been coming up is the uh, the deal with the Boston College, um, you know, where they're doing the studies. Right. What's your, what's your opinion about that and as far as a baseline? I've actually been accepted to go do that. They offered to fly me out there and to, and to do all that. What's your opinion about all that? They do great work. Dr. Ann McKee. Um, here's, a, here's one of the things that I have going on. I've been very vocal. Once I found Dave's blog, it's, it's been a blessing for me. Like I said, two years ago or three years ago when I first discovered it, um, I started writing. And, and the day they hired Dr. Ellen Bogan, when they got rid of Dr. No, I fired off a letter to him and just ripped him. I said, you better not be another paid whore like these other guys. I said, or you're going to burn in hell like what they've, for what they've done to some of these families. So bottom line is Dr. Ellen Bogan and I have been coordinating very closely. He asked me for recommendations um, uh, before uh, when he first came on board. So one of the things I, I recommended to him was every single player coming into the league 
has a baseline microcognitive test, okay, has a spec scan, so they have a baseline data. You're coming in and they know where you're at. And if you're concussed, you don't return to play till, and I just picked an arbitrary number, but let's say you don't play till you're back to 90% of where you were, whatever it is, so some number. But so the, getting, getting the data, uh, so those at Boston University, they've done great work, uh, but a lot of their work was on deceased players' brains, unfortunately. You know, working with the tau protein buildups and all that. Dave Dewerson, you know, he shot himself in the chest intentionally with, in his note stated, donate my brain to the, to the brain bank. And, and he had tau protein buildup, CTE, like probably a lot of us do. Okay, so uh, I kind of, again, I have a tendency to get off track. I, I, but, but, but my, my point is, you know, being a, a player that played back in the, in the 80s, right. I, I, I had no baseline. So right. now that I'm going out there or, or commit to going out there of free will to go out there and to do this study, do you see any disadvantage uh, of, of doing those studies because of, you know, they, they turn it into a baseline? No, because no. I, I don't have a baseline. Right, but either did I. I played in the early, I played in 80 and 81. So my first microcog and my first spec scans were just two years ago when I first started all this. Dr. Duncan. But what they can do, they can track yeah. you. They can, you can go in every year now and see whether or not you're declining at a much rapid rate than the normal population. Yeah, you'll be also be pleased to know that when they do the, these baselines, there are ways they can tell what your IQ used to be. They're, they're part right. of the diagnostic, okay? Plus, when they do the microcog, they also have the population baseline. This is what the normals look like. They can look back at your SAT scores. They can look back at your ASVAB scores if you were in the Army and, and took an ASVAB. And they can tell what you were then. Okay, so there, you, there's a lot of baseline measures that they pick up, but you have to do one of these formal diagnoses in order to get that kind of information. Okay? A absolutely. Uh, one of the things neurology is really, really good at is measuring where you are. They, this, is, this is the real specialty of neurology, is not fixing people, but where you are. And that's one of the good things about Dr. Amen and, and his focus on making you better, because he's a psychiatrist. Would that have any effect on, on being part of this lawsuit, this concussion lawsuit? Would that have any effect on going out and having those tests done? If you, if you don't have a baseline, you've got no basis. With the, the baseline and, and where you were and where you are gives you a basis for the lawsuit. Okay, it gives you evidence, as the, as the lawyers in here know. Evidence is vital. If you don't have a baseline, you're just where you are. And yeah. you look good to me. See, that's, then that's the problem too with us. That's right, yeah. see? So the, the, these baselines, it, it is really surprising. I just went and had a, a test done two years ago. I was stunned by what they were able to tell about my history from the tests they did, okay? In fact, Doug L. from the Groom Law Group, he said Dewerson looked fine, yeah. and then he blew his heart out. So you can't look at someone and see how they're doing. You have to go to, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I've had two uh, examinations by clinical psychologists with PhDs, and they test your memory. And you may think you're doing well, but, it, but your okay. wife or someone that's around you, they observe the way you process information. And you take a test, and then they can tell you where you are. Now this test, a neuropsychological evaluation, can be anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000, but it's very revealing. When I, was, when I applied for Social Security Disability, I got the same type of test. And if you get those tests, it'll tell you where your memory is, and uh, very valuable, because you may think you're doing okay, and you may think that, oh, I can work through it. The problem is, it just gets worse. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I personally encourage all retired players, sign up for these concussion lawsuits. Absolutely. A um, couple other things I want to 
I'm sorry to cut you off. No, 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 go ahead. Okay, just a couple other things uh, that have really helped me again on the hyperbarics, um, omega-3 fish oils, and then another one. One of the one of the um, uh, problems that we have with a lot of head banging, and any actually in every one of your your cells in your body, we get inflammation. Inflammation is from trauma. Your cells get inflamed, and what happens is they'll die a lot sooner than they normally do. Antioxidants are great for that. Again, I'm not a big one on the drugs. Everything they've had me on over the years, the side effects have been worse than what they're treating. So on top of the fish oils and the hyperbarics, I started on, on um, uh, I, I take Dr. Barry Sears, the, the C Health Plus, and it's just concentrated blueberry juices, cranberry juices, all these high octane antioxidants. They reduce inflammation in your cells. When you reduce that inflammation, those cells live longer. Okay? And they repair themselves too. So look into these things, taking care of yourself. And then one last issue I, I need to get out. Those of you that, are in, that live in California, Ed Nemeth, the man that built the, the hyperbaric oxygen treatment center in Sacramento where I get treatment, and he specifically built it because he, has a, he had a brain damaged daughter that they wanted to pull off a of life support 10 years ago, and he refused. He built the, the clinic in Sacramento, and he has been an incredible advocate for TBI, for veterans, for the NFL. He right now is running for assembly in California. So if any of you folks are, are from California, he's running assembly district nine. And his first, I spoke with him yesterday when I was down there getting my treatment again. He said, George, the first thing, he goes, the second they swear me in, he said, there's a law on the books that was passed years ago in California, AB 2046, and it allows, um, uh, uh, it allows for um, what the uh, hyperbarics are known as off-label treatment. It's been FDA approved, it's been peer-reviewed twice, but AB 2046 allows for reimbursement for the off-label treatments if it's prescribed by your doctor, okay? So if you're around, if you're in California, we need to get Ed Nemeth in, in office. The man, is, is, he's on a mission and it's gonna help us greatly, okay? Again, a question? Uh, I'm a disabled stunt woman. Actually, I want to pose this question this way, is that if you have been a part of different football teams, can you have separate worker comps against different, lead, uh, well, I may be saying it wrong, but different teams? Or, or is it? That's a, good, that's a great question. Oops, I. Why don't you come here? Your, your mic is not. <laughs> so, uh, everybody can hear me? Good. Yeah. It's all yours. Uh, I can only speak uh, with expertise about California law. But I'm sure uh, in those few states besides California that allow cumulative trauma claims, the answer is generally no as to cumulative trauma claims. In California, the only team or teams that are liable for 100% of every problem the worker has as a result of cumulative trauma is the last employer during the last 365 days. So let's just pretend for purposes of illustration that uh, uh, the employment ended the last time they were exposed to injurious exposure, meaning contact. Let's just keep it football players for the second. But the law is applicable to anybody. Uh, let's say it's, it's January 1, 2005. We go back 365 days. Whoever employed him during that period, it may have been more than one team, sometimes it's as many as three, they are really liable for whatever percentage of time they employed him during that 365 days. Now, <clears throat> that's for cumulative trauma. Uh, the person can have a cumulative trauma claim. Uh, <clears throat> in addition, the person can have claims for specific injuries. If, a, if an injury, let's just pretend uh, we're talking about a, uh, uh, if it's determined that 75% of the current problems with that right knee were the result of cumulative trauma, then he would have a claim against the employers during his last year of injurious exposure problem with the knee. If 25% specific injury, then he could have a
played for Indianapolis, for Indianapolis to be liable, or his contract in California, so he's considered what's called a California hiree. Did that answer it? Um, I believe so, and I'm, this, is, this is part of, I'll say, my brain injury. Let me repeat it back to you. So let's say you're on a t Team A, and you've broken your leg, and, and everyone knows that you've broken your leg, and through the years, it's deteriorating. And then you start playing for Team B, and you have a neck injury. I mean, very specific injuries with two different teams. So again, you're saying that you could have two worker comps, or you're saying due to a statute? You could. You could have two worker comp claims. You could have three. You could have one claim for a specific injury to the neck, one claim for a specific injury to the knee, and a cumulative trauma claim for the rest of your body, including the neurological aspect. But it's not just neurological aspect. The thing about um, uh, professional football, and again, uh, a, a reason why the league is trying so hard to kill this process that allows people to file claims in California is that there's other aspects. Just about every athlete who has sufficient pain because of, of the problems uh, generally loses sleep at night. And loss of sleep and continuous pain cause depression. And so we also bring a claim, a psychiatric claim for depression. So those multiple right. claims, mul the answer is multiple claims can exist. Multiple claims cannot exist. Can. Oh, can. They, oh, they I'm can sorry. exist. Can exist. They can uh, exist. I guess, um, but so, what I, what I want to so stress to you is that. Specifically in California, because you were saying, like, lucky for some people. It's one who, year. 20? No, one year. One it's, year. It's one year, but the employers are required to give written notice to the injured worker that he has a right, he or she has a right. If they fail to give that notice, also not aware of his or her rights, then the statute's suspended until the worker finds out. In theory, the statute, in theory, uh, it's infinity. The worker doesn't, hasn't found out. And while I'm up here, I just sincerely want to thank her for allowing me to be here. Like the football players, we've hit the ground and nowhere in our life would ever think we'd be in the situation that we're in now. And again, thank you very much, Dave, for allowing me to be here. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Bob, Bob did you have a question? Or? Let, let me answer her question though, real quickly. Uh, real quick, in, in, in addressing your, this was from my, my settlement. This, was, this from, was from the judge. It said, the, see, the, the, my whole battle with the Niners, they were trying to say my, me developing hydrocephalus, it was congenital, it was a birth defect I always had. The judge's statement, the evidence does not warrant the application of apportionment. Unquestionably, there was a pre-existing condition. However, the case is the effect that the employer takes the employee not be an apportionment on the basis of pathology alone. Clearly, there was no pre-existing disability. Ansel sets forth an apportionment. He explained medical or pathological terms rather than legal to employee as he finds him. So if you go from one team to another, the first day you're there, you have to go through a physical. So let's say you're dinged up with the Dolphins, the Detroit. You go through your physical. If they pass you through a physical, they have an injury that pops up that maybe you hit your back earlier in the year, but suddenly out, if they pass you through the unless I'm wrong. Well, uh, the law did change uh, 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 since George's claim was filed. And now there can be a portion of this thing as a congenital condition. But generally speaking, uh, the apportionment would probably be modest. For instance, if your condition, a person can have a congenital condition. And so maybe a doctor might say 25% of your problems are due to a congenital condition causation because you were in a profession that triggered the condition the impact on medical care. If somebody in California was found, if an employer was found to even have one of the problem, their response the apportionment only affects what's going on. Question for you. Um, am I to understand that if you represent somebody in California and they successfully get a claim through workers' comp, settle it, that they pretty much automatically get lifetime medical for that? No, what happens is that one of the benefits, as I say, is lifetime medical. The insurance company will make an effort to offer extra money 
Okay. To try to get them to waive right. future medical care. And I can tell you this, I don't care how much we tell future medical care open, uh, there often are conditions in life, immediate need for cash, the base is stable again, that they, and they take a higher settlement. Thanks. Because remember though, though related conditions, it's not going to apply you. So a person's got to have the health insurance. And uh, it, we'll take the gentleman at the mic and then Bob and then the one gentleman back. Uh, we'll, we'll get those questions. Remember years ago, uh, in case with the uh, Pittsburgh, I did get a modest settlement to care for my future medical. So I had Force Medicine Company in Dallas, but they are supposed to recommend me to other doctors that I need trauma. I do, which was acknowledged. It is through this sports medicine clinic that I go through, is it possible for me to go into the uh, hyperbaric chamber treatment through this organization? Is that possible? Let Mr. Duncan handle that. We will help anyone get treatment, okay? The other processes as we go along, a charity. The charity helps people. I wanted to add, by the way, uh, fat, okay? So keep in mind that these fats he's talking about are essential in helping the brain repair itself. We don't get enough of the right kind of fats in our diet. But the answer to your question is yes, we will help. And uh, we will we'll help you. And you can turn around and the people that are providing. I come to you. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and we'll, you. we'll help you find treatment. And we'll work to get referral from your doctor appropriately. So yes. Well, and you see, what's so sad about this is, is our union should be doing this for us. The NFL, I mean, it's their job. In corporate America, that's the way it works. But they've, you know, we're conditioned to think that all this stuff is, is charity. And that's what they forced us to go to. And that's the issue. We have, we have rights and demand our benefits. We don't want any damn charity. We want what you owe us.